You look great, baby. Should I hit the little horn? Do you want to? Yeah, I do. Come on. <laughs> Go ahead, babe. Okay. <laughs> We're ready now? Oh, I, that was supposed to be like the intro. Oh. I'm like, welcome. Try it again. Okay. What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I am Sarah. If you're new here, this is my boyfriend Kingston. What's up y'all? We're happy you're back for another video. We recently made a video kind of detailing how we met, how we were friends, and then how we kind of got into the relationship we're in now where we really try our best to keep God at the center. So if you missed that video, go check that one out first. A lot of y'all were kind of asking how we met. Make sure you go check that one out. But an overwhelming question we were getting after making that first video was kind of what each of our individual single seasons looked like in preparation for the relationship we're now walking in. So I went ahead and put up a question box on my Instagram story to allow y'all to ask all of your questions and there were so many good submissions. I'm honestly not sure we're gonna be able to talk through all of them today, that's okay, that's what a part two is for. So hopefully y'all enjoy this video, it's helpful in some way. Anything you wanna add before we get into the questions? Make sure y'all like, comment, <laughs> subscribe. Hit the bell notification to be notified when she uploads more videos. <laughs> Go and subscribe to my channel too. That would be great. Let's get right into it. I'll waste no time. So our first question that a lot of people asked was how you met. But like I said, go watch that first video and you'll get all the juicy deets on that one. So up first we have, were you looking for love when you met each other? So when we met each other, I would say I was not looking for love. Absolutely not. Um, we met back in 2022. I'm not going to get back into the whole story like that video we did. But we met and we were just friends. So when we met back in 2022... It was like January. We didn't start dating until August of 2023. And so the season that I met him in, I was not looking for love. I was very much not in that season of my life. Oh, like when we met, met. Mm -hmm. Oh. When, when, when could you have met after you met? No, I'm just... So when we first met, no. Mm -hmm. I was definitely not looking for love. Uh, I had just got our relationship when I first yeah, got like to only Dallas. A few months before that, right? Yeah. yeah. So I was definitely not looking for that. I was looking at working on myself. Next question Did you guys ever feel like you were never going to find that right person aligned to your beliefs? I felt like I was going to find it. I wasn't going to settle for anything less than that. And it's like that goes with understanding what you want. And I took the time um, to reflect on the, my past relationship, mm -hmm. reflect on you know what went wrong or things I don't like, and even the things that you know I could have done better, right? Um, it starts with self-reflection. So once you're able to do that, I know what I want in my, my next girlfriend. At that time, it was like, I don't wanna just date, just to date. Like this is like dating to marry. So like, actually, okay, what does a wife look like to me? What does defining, the Bible say? Defining that for yourself. Right. Yeah. Exactly. What does the Bible say a wife should be like as well? And I knew I wanted a Christ in a relationship. So at that time too, when I first got to Dallas, I was deepening my relationship with the Lord. I wasn't at the point where I am right now, um, but I was like, I was trying, right? I was actually putting the steps, stepping towards that. Um, instead of just doing the talk, like I was actually trying and I was like, okay, I want this out of a wife. I want this. And I was like, I'm not going to settle just because, you know, a girl looks good or whatever. Yeah. In the past, it was like, that's that's all it was. Oh, you look good? Like, all right, let's, yeah. let's date. You know right. what I'm saying? And that's just not, that's not the qualities that's going to keep result a healthy, a right, exactly. Result in a, in a fruitful marriage. It just went what? on a whole little rant Isn't there. It? No, to go off of what you were saying, I think that nowadays the culture teaches us to date based off of preferences and not based off of standards. And mm. people define their preferences and they define their standards, but like they kind of get muddy, you know? And preference is like, you know, I prefer someone who is this height or this color eyes or looks like this or plays this sport or those are preferences. A standard is I want a man of God right? Or I want a man who is 
kind with me, who is gentle. When you start to understand the difference between standards and preferences and you define them for yourselves, preferences are great. And more you get to know the Lord's character, you start to understand that God wants, God already knows your desires and he wants for you what you want. He wants what's best for you, I should say. He wants what's best for you. And he already has that prepared for you. So the more you learn that about him, to one, answer the question, I didn't ever feel like I was never going to find that. I just knew it was a matter of time because I have faith in God delivering that to me. And I had faith that God had my best out there. But you don't learn how to walk in that faith until you get to know God's heart and get to know God's character. When I finally started to understand that, I realized I don't even need to be giving time to men who aren't what I know God would want for me. If I know God would not want me to be treated that way, I know God has better for me. I'm not even going to waste my time with people who clearly are not met up to that standard. When you define your standards and your preferences, and when you also have that faith in the Lord, and you are, you are walking in that faith with Him, then you know He's, he's going to deliver. It's just a matter of time. So it's much easier to be patient. It's much easier to not settle. Much easier to not find yourself in situationships or situations where you know you deserve better, but like somehow you're still there. It's much easier to get yourself out of that because you're like, I've got faith that he's got the best prepared for me and I know my standards. And just because this falls with my preference, it's not my standard, so I'm not going for it. That's a bar, standards over preferences. Mm -hmm. I think the culture teaches us that like, they're the same thing and they're not. It's like, they're well, not. She, well, she looked good or he looked mm -hmm. good, but was he a man of God? Did he treat you right? Mm -hmm. You know, did he did he prioritize your peace? Mm -hmm. Did he love you like Christ loved the church? Does he do those things? No. No, but he's, you know, he's got some tattoos, like, so I like that. That's, yeah. Okay, in 10 years, when you're knee-deep in a relationship and you're trying to get through life together, is your preference going to hold you together? No, it's not. What's going to hold you together? Having God this in your relationship, having a man who, who looked towards Christ of how, of how to live his life, that's going to help hold you together. Yeah, that's, 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 yeah. <laughs> the clap program down there? I don't know if I hit the clap. <laughs> live in a culture now where people get in situationships and relationships that they're not supposed to be in because of a couple things status mm -hmm. you know sex Which i feel like status would fall on preferences like i want to make yeah, it, yeah, it falls in right, right yeah. it falls in preferences yeah. you know these are all like preferences especially like since i moved to dallas like i, I hear about it all the time you know and you just see it too social media and stuff of uh, people just hating for surface level things for clout, for status. Right, for... clout, status. Yeah. And you see it all the time in with celebrities too as, mm -hmm. as well, which I think a lot of people are getting their influence from. Um, yeah, you know. where are you getting your example from? Right. Are you looking to TMZ or are you looking to the Bible? Exactly. It's it's just a culture thing. Guy is tall, you know, has money, or may play in a league or something. And, uh, you know. Oh, oh like, he's my type, he's my type. Right, you know, looks Maybe good. Maybe you change your type, sis. Right. Maybe you need to change the time, bro. And how I was, like, when I was weeding through, you know, the crowds, I could tell right then and there, nah. You know what I mean? Just, like, when I was single and I got, when I worked on myself and everything like that, and I was putting myself back out there. Um, I, since I knew my standards, I was able to literally have a conversation with somebody, with a girl, and literally know like right there like nah that's that's not that's, not, that's not you you may look good yeah. but like no but i feel like that goes off of too what you said earlier about you starting to learn what you wanted in a wife but also how the bible defines a wife because like for me like the more i got to understanding the more the bible des describes a husband and the more that the bible describes what love is what kind of love you deserve if God is describing what love is and what kind of love you deserve that means he has that love prepared for you mm -hmm. that someone can give you but, you know, it's a two-way street. I have to be mature and refined by the Lord to understand how to be that good wife, but also what to seek out in a husband. And so then when someone like you is giving me that proper love and treating me like Christ loves the church and doing what the Bible defines a husband is supposed to be, it brings you so much more peace about that relationship. Like, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be but because I've learned this. I've gotten my word and I've figured out, you know, what God has for me. So the minute you're talking to a girl or someone in public when you're single and it doesn't sit right with your spirit anymore it's because you've got the holy spirit in you and you've learned that in the bible and you can easily you don't even get into that you don't fall into the trap you understand the principles um of the bible and, and, and the principles of what the lord wants for you then you're able to weed through things mm -hmm. much quicker and have discernment on mm -hmm. you know that's definitely not who the lord wants you to be with because it doesn't yeah. align with what the bible says yeah. you know Everything true comes from what the Lord says, and yeah. 
it's, it's once you actually read and, and start to understand, you know, get more knowledgeable yeah. and actually put that stuff to work. And, and it's about being obedient too. I mean, I'm gonna go to, uh, and this just goes back to, you know, reading the Bible, right? Reading the Bible to understand how you're supposed to be living, but putting it, like obeying it, like actually putting it to work. James 1, 22, it says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says, and don't forget what you've heard, then God will bless you for doing it. It's important to, to obey. As you start to obey and like do these things, especially as like a new believer, if there's like new believers out there, listen, we've all been there, right? We've all was at that point. And I was raised in the church. You know, it doesn't, I feel like it doesn't really matter until you actually mm -hmm. seek that relationship for yourself. For yourself. Mm -hmm. And when I was like, all right, I'm gonna seek this relationship for myself. And I start doing the baby steps, you know, watching the Bible project and actually cracking open my Bible and reading. It started to make sense and it started to get easier understanding before you know it, like I was actually living it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't hard yeah. to, to live it, you know, as I kept practicing. It brought, it's literally it like practice. It brought you peace when you lived right. it, so you wanted to keep doing it. Exactly. I see why you're, I'm told to do this. Exactly. Yeah. And then it clicks and it's like, wow, like I'm definitely going to live by what the Lord wants because it brings so much peace and joy and literally yeah. haven't looked back since. Right. Next question. <laughs> Up next, how to remain content in the waiting slash not get so independent that you aren't open to dating? I think this is a really good question and it's definitely a balance that each of us have to find. I know for me, um, I definitely struggled with hyper independence and for a long time I almost was just like not interested in the idea of dating because I was so hyper focused on my goals and my career and things I wanted to do that I just, I was becoming like too independent. And I definitely think that's, you know, a tactic of the enemy. It's like, if he can't get you to date the wrong person, maybe he can get you to just not date at all. The Lord wants us to be in, in a uh, covenant. Thank you. In covenant, I can think the word. In covenant. The Lord does not want us to just walk alone. It's definitely important to take each season as it comes. But it's not saying to rush through your single season because at our core, we are each singles. We are each individuals. We were made that way first, but then we were made to be in that covenant, right? So there's definitely a balance of not looking to be too hyper independent, but also it's essential, essential that you are content during your single season and in that waiting season. Because if you aren't, you are going to turn to your partner to fulfill certain things that the Lord should have fulfilled for you when you were in your waiting season. And my single season before Kingston and I started dating was probably the most content I've ever been in my singleness ever. And it makes so much sense why Kingston then came right after. I was not seeking a relationship. I wasn't against it at all. And the minute it was right in front of me and I, we both saw it, we were like, oh yeah, let's do it. Like this is organic. This is, this is called for by God. But before that, I was so extremely content in my waiting season. I loved the way my relationship with God was growing. I loved kind of just the way I could see the Lord working in my life in general. I loved the friendships I was forming from Kingston to just friendships I had with girls, you know, in different communities I was in to the way my career was going. Everything felt so great, so good, so at peace. And it's because during like the six, seven months before Kingston walked into my life as my boyfriend, I really like doubled down on that relationship with the Lord. And that's 100% why I felt that contentness. But I know I would not have been ready for a relationship until that contentness was there. And that you can't fake that contentness. Either. That's a heart posture. That's you genuinely being content and you genuinely learning to lean on the Lord for certain things. You know, put your confidence in him, your faith in him, find strength in him. When you do all of these things, you are proving to yourself and proving to him that you are growing through that season, right? So it's 100% essential that you are content in that single season and you use that single season for what it is serving you for. So you can't rush through any season, right? Because you're not going to rush God's hand. You, can't, you cannot rush God's hand. And you also can't stop him from doing something. But you can take each season for what it is. But going on the other end of the spectrum, and basically, because if you're being hyper-independent that you aren't even open to dating, you're trying to take control. If God's got something planned for you, right, and you're trying to take control by being too independent, that's not what you need to be doing either. You need to give up control to the Lord. That's something I had to learn to do. And I... I learned, oh wow, like the minute I become content in my single season, now this perfect partner is sitting right in front of me. 
But without that contentness, without also on the other end of the spectrum, that ability to give up that control, I don't think you're going to find that good balance. Heavy on, heavy on, if you do not find contentness in your single season, you will turn to your partner to fulfill what the Lord needed to fulfill. Like, if I did not have, and I know you would say the same thing, if I did not have my own relationship with the Lord before Kingston came into my life, and if I was not seeking certain things in Him, I would look for Kingston to fill that. You know, I also was, I learned how to love myself because God showed me how he loved me. I then learned how to love myself and that is how I learned how to love others. That's what the Bible tells us to love the Lord first and then you will love yourself and you will learn to love others as you love yourself, but you can't love others properly until you love yourself properly until you learn how God loves you and you love God first, right? So it's all, it all works together like that. But if somewhere in that is out of whack, you are not going to love your partner properly. You're also not going to learn how to receive love for them properly. So that relationship is already going to get messed up. Wow. Just to piggyback off that, everything you said was right. You know, it, it goes both ways. Um, being content with being single, but focusing on your relationship with the Lord in that single season. So I went off to Ohio. Uh, I played for the New Jersey Generals, USFL. And we went off to Ohio. And I was out there, I was... Five months, like... Literally just by myself. And you called that your isolation season. Like, you were... I was. ...very aware of it, and you were very, like, respectful of it. You weren't trying to rush out of it. Yeah. Um, it was literally, like, I would get up in the morning, go to practice, like, come back, and I would be in, like, my little... Because there was nothing to do. It was almost like God did do. the perfect yeah. thing in putting you out there because <laughs> you had to sit with him more, and you had to spend time with yourself, too. You couldn't lean on friends or any other distractions, right? Literally. Um, was literally had nothing out there to do really, but, but to, uh, sit down, spend time with the Lord, um, work on business stuff. And it was very much, I was, like she said, I was very aware that it was an isolation season and I worked on myself a lot, you know? And even before that, when I was in Dallas before that, um, I was taking the time to one, reflect right, on things that I can do better, uh, things that I want in a partner, and then just being self-sufficient and strengthening my relationship with the Lord and not really, you know, trying to go, you know how, like, you can, I know for guys, I don't think girls do this, but, like, guys, like, you try to go put yourself in the mix, right? Like, yeah. you try to go, like... You're trying to manipulate situations. Right, you're, you're trying, trying to, to force, seek, yeah. you're trying to seek, you know, women and all these different things, um, it got to the point where I was just literally like, I was, I was, I was literally going to the movies, out you're to solo, eat. You were solo dating yourself. Literally. I was doing a lot of things by myself. And, and enjoying it. Like you and were literally having a good time. It. You yes. were taking yourself on dates. I remember like, yes. you made your solo, your solo date content. I did like do I that. TikTok, yeah. Solo. That wasn't just for, for social media. Yeah, like, I literally was doing that for that months. Yes. hundred percent. Yeah. And I actually really liked it. Yeah. I, did, I like still going no, it's okay. I out like to eat with you too. too. I think that's why. We're each now walking in this fruitful relationship because we each really enjoyed our single seasons before, so not, neither of us were forcing yeah. it. That just shows it came in organic timing because it wasn't like one of us was really chasing the other. We were yeah. chilling. I, I was I really super liked big my chilling. single season like, yeah. for, what it, for what it was, yeah. I was super big chilling. Super big chilling. Yeah, super big chilling. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Did you learn how to be a good girlfriend slash boyfriend before getting into a relationship in parentheses in God's eyes? Yeah. Uh, That's it. <laughs> next question. Next question. <laughs> um, yes. Yes. Next. Um, that just goes back to, you know, in your single season, like you, you just, you take the time, goes back to what I was talking about with reflecting. Mm -hmm. After I got out of my relationship, my last relationship, this is like actually the first time I've actually did like self-reflection like real self-reflection i'm not talking about just like Hold yourself accountable like, like yes i should have did that wrong, exactly yeah and not like made excuses for yourself right. and justified it a lot of guys and you know who you are if you guys are watching <laughs> this they make excuses for themselves um you know a relationship may go sour or you know you having problems oh my girl tripping i hear it all the time and it's like why is she tripping though and i hear these things now you know i, I hear it now and I'm sitting in the place I am now. Like, I can, like, be able to be like, nah, she's not tripping. You know what I'm saying? Like, is she tripping, though, bro? Right. Like, is she tripping? Do? No, she's not tripping. Like, you're tripping. You know what I'm saying? Like, Back are you then, suspecting her? Then, yeah. Right. 
Back then, I'm like, oh, yeah, she tripping, you know, I'm, I'm green, you know. Hold Side on. note, look who your man has around him, because... <laughs> oh, that too. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's a whole different thing. But yeah, but I actually took the time to, like, really self-reflect, deep self-reflection, and that allowed me to actually grow and be like, you know, a real man is going to do this. You know, he's going to do this. And I'm also reading the Bible, studying how a man of God is supposed to be. And, and actually, called to treat a wife. Exactly. Yeah. So living that out and, and doing the work, it starts with you, mm-hmm. you know. And, and, and you have to look yourself in the mirror and really do the work yourself. Mm-hmm. No woman or no person is going to do that work for you. You have to do it yourself. And... I think for for a relationship to be healthy, you know, uh, uh, dealing with all that stuff, you know, traumas and, and all different types of stuff, to be able to go to somebody else and, and have a healthy relationship, um, that's super important. Yeah, and you have to be able to, like, take that criticism, not criticism, but, like, understand your role in things that aren't going well, things that aren't, you know, healthy, mm-hmm. like, what am I doing wrong, you that self-reflection. Mm-hmm. I also think that, you know, I heard someone say once, God is a gentleman. He's going to knock. He's not just going to barge into your life. You have to invite him in. And you have to invite him in to allow him to heal those messy parts of you. He must expose them first. You must allow him to do that work in you and expose to you, you know, different areas you need to heal, different times when you did not exhibit fruits of the Spirit. What are the fruits of the Spirit? How do I exhibit them better? There's so much messiness that the lord can so easily expose and heal you from but you have to allow him in first to do that and the minute you do that's when you you start growing and being refined into the person who's going to be that good girlfriend that good boyfriend and then thus that good husband that good wife you know you should be dating to marry and if you're dating to marry you i have the goal of being a good wife he has the goal of being a good husband but we each have to understand what our our roles are and then what the counter person roles are so i can hold him accountable to what a good husband looks like if he ever were to act in a way that didn't align and vice versa. He could hold me accountable in that good way, you know? And until like the Bible says, like uh, a husband is called to love his wife like Christ loves the church. Well, how are you supposed to know how to love your wife if you don't know how Christ loved the church, right? You need to, you need to get to know Christ. You need to get to know the Lord. You need to get in your word. And as you learn those things, you are being refined into how to be that good partner the way God calls us to be. <laughs> Next. <laughs> when did you know you were ready to be in a relationship versus wanted to be in one? I think wanted to be in one versus ready. I believe you're kind of asking like you're seeking it out versus you are prepared to be in one maybe. And like for me, I think the minute I knew I had genuine peace in my singleness, genuine contentness. Like I wasn't just faking it. I wasn't like, no, I like this. Like hoping that that means a man will get sent my way. You know? Because you know how people do that. Yeah. I'm loving it over here. And then you're like, <laughs> like no my prayers were that like the lord knew i was open and ready when he was ready to send my husband my way i was open to receive it but i was also like continuing to just like want to be to be shaped by him the difference between wanting to be in one i think when you really want to be in one you seek it for the wrong reason and that's when you end up settling and that's when you end up finding yourself in situationships you shouldn't be in if you really really want to be in a relationship you're going to forsake certain morals you have certain values you're going to start dating off preferences versus allowing yourself to Go through the season until you're genuinely ready. You're going to know when you're ready. The Lord will let you know. You're going to know. You're going to feel that peace. And you're also going to see someone in front of you or something that you can tell, God has now sent this to my life. This is God sent. Like, I'm ready to now see what God is sending me. Yeah. you. I mean, you pretty much pretty much everything that needs to be said. <laughs> okay. Do you guys ever panic about how you interact with men and women now that you're in a relationship versus before when you're single and you don't really think about that no i, think, I was gonna say i think he's asking if we're jealous right Absolutely yeah not. i think when you just have complete trust in a relationship mm-hmm. you don't really yeah. i've actually never i've seen so like i'm not a jealous type like i don't I don't naturally get jealous like before even before i walked with the lord and like I'm, you you learn not to envy right like mm-hmm. I didn't naturally get jealous until I would see my partner get very jealous. And then I'd be like, hey, well, why are you so jealous? Because if you're so jealous and you're not trusting me, it's because you're doing something and you start playing that game, right? And then suddenly you're being jealous. 
but it also stems from a lack of trust, right? So there was a part of me that never really understood how people were what were in relationships and just had such amazing trust. Like I would see people and I'd be like, "Do you actually trust them though?" Or like in the back of your head, are you wondering? Are you checking their location? Like you know, until now, and I completely understand people. Who <laughs> I completely understand people who have that trust. And I think it comes down to, to two things. One, we were literally best friends before we got into a relationship. So, and we didn't rush anything, right? We didn't rush getting into some relationship. We genuinely got to know each other. And then we genuinely, like, loved each other as friends. We had this really good friendship and love mm-hmm. for each other, platonic. Mm-hmm. You don't want to hurt your friend. Like, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to do something that hurts you. So that's one side of the equation. That doesn't mean no one ever messes up. That's one side of it. The other side of it is when you do a relationship the Lord's way, when you do it in God's order, there is a reason he calls you to do it that way. He's protecting your heart and he's also protecting the covenant you're building. So us walking in abstinence and us doing our relationship the Lord's way builds a level of trust that is indescribable. And you do not, I don't know if you, I don't think you come to it any other way. Like if he is able to be with me all the time and stick to our conviction on being abstinent and stick to the fact that the Lord has called us to do that before marriage and I'm who he dates like I have nothing but so much faith in him and not faith trust in you I have so much trust in you I'm not worried about any girl you're around I automatically give him the benefit of the doubt if something were to sound suspicious my first reaction would be like no like it can't be it can't be that because I this man's not sus. Like, the, he doesn't do anything suspicious. Like, there's no way. They're, like, my my first reaction is to automatically give him the benefit of the doubt. Most people's first reaction is to doubt. Well, what were you doing there? Why are you doing that? Like, you want the explanation. Us, we're just like, oh, okay, cool. Like, you know? Because you have that trust built. Because, mm-hmm. one, we were just good friends before. But, two, we're doing it the Lord's way. And so you start to understand, oh, this is why God wants us to do this. This is why. Mm-hmm. Now I get it. Like, he's literally trying to build up and protect the covenant that we're about to create. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's big on doing it the Lord's way. Uh, like you said, I don't think you come to that unless you do it that way. And now I can't believe I was ever in a relationship where I didn't trust someone the way I trust you. I'm like, this exists? And that's the thing. Like, the minute you understand what God has, truly has for you, the minute you understand what God wants you, the peace that God has prepared for you in that relationship, mm-hmm. you waste not a single moment anywhere else. No, 100%. It's funny. Um, I think you explained it in the first video. What? Or like, especially that one day, or sometimes like when we're like away from each other, like I'll oh, be yes. doing something, you're like doing something. We just like don't hear from each other for like all day, all day. We're busy. Yeah. yeah, and it's just like we're not like you know where you been, where you been, like, like, like you, yeah. Let me go check like, your phone. Let me literally, you know. literally. Uh, it was on my birthday, wasn't it? Yeah. And I was in the office for what was hours. It your birthday? It was before. Oh, it was before yeah. before my birthday. I wasn't gonna leave you alone on your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. It was before my birthday, and she was like planning a surprise thing, and yeah. I'm just like. But he was so locked in. He didn't. I was even... so locked in, just like getting work done, and uh, my sister's like, "Have you talked to Sarah?" I was like, "No, I haven't talked to her in a while." I don't really know. I'm just right well, back to work. <laughs> Literally haven't talked to you probably like five hours at this point, like yeah. five six hours, like, and it was just like. There's no anxiety. There's no nothing. checking location. Nothing. There's, that doesn't exist. Yeah. And like you know, like we're not. There's no sec- there's no secrets about anything. Like mm-hmm. he can get on my phone all he wants. He knows my passwords. He knows everything. Like he'll joke with me. Like no, let me let me go through your DMs. Like messing with me. And I'm like go for it. Like he, you know, if we have that joke with each other, and we'll also like joke about just like PTSD. We're like, we'll say something, and then we'll like joke. We'll joke that it triggers like an old an old moment with an old partner. We're like mm-hmm. we remember like you know he'll remember like oh I remember a girl getting mad at me about this this and that, and we'll like joke that we have like that PTSD yeah. and we're so grateful that we don't have that in our relationship. Yeah. That's that's big too. I think like it just goes back to you don't you don't you don't get that until you like do it the Lord's way, work on yourself, stuff like that. Yeah. I used to be a cheater. You already know this, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you guys this now. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, like, you know, I used to cheat on my girlfriends all the time, especially in high school and stuff. And uh it's like you know, going through phones and stuff, how much anxiety that builds up. It's like all that, like, sneaking around and, you know, that's, like, super foreign to me now. And uh, it's funny that we, like, joke about stuff like that and how, like, you know, you take my phone, do whatever. I don't care. You have it all day. I really don't get on that much mm-hmm. anyway. 
And uh, you just don't have that, you know, until you do it the Lord's way. Um, work on yourself and really be the man and woman that God has called you to be. Yeah. Yeah. I sure. focus on your relationship with Jesus before all else. Setting intentional time with the Lord. And life can get busy. And I'm at fault for this too. I am like not a perfect Christian over here. Nobody's perfect. No yeah. And you know, there'll be days where I'll go without reading my Bible and spending time with the Lord. And I'll like pick up on I'm like, man, I haven't like, and I feel different. I like, and I, and I actually it. feel different. You, feel you know, like my week wouldn't be, you know, like as well. More right. hundred percent. patient. hundred percent. hundred percent. And I feel it, and I'm like, I need, I need to spend more time with the Lord. Like I'm. We'll we'll see it in each mm -hmm. other. Like we can literally mm -hmm. tell. Like what kind of go spend, go spend some time with God, and immediately we're both are like, yeah, yeah. Like we're you know like we have the humility to be like, yeah, I need to go do that. Yeah. It definitely was. Yeah, that's uh, that's big. Just actually setting time, and it's so and as easy as that sounds, it's hard to do. Mm -hmm. You actually have to be intentional with mm -hmm. it because. You know, you be disciplined I, with it. Yeah. yeah, I know for me, like, I literally could be doing something every minute of the day. Mm -hmm. I can't. Mm -hmm. Like, I just have a lot of stuff going on, and it can be so easy for me to like wake up and then be like, "All right, let's get to it." Like, do a million one things. you know, I, I need to do this, 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 yeah. and this, and I'm just like starting to like go yeah. check stuff off my list, and it's like I'm neglecting that time mm -hmm. that I need to spend with God. First, just like set the day, you yeah. know. What I mean? First priority is supposed to fall, right? And yet, sometimes we let it like hit the back burner, and then it goes days, and you're like, "Why am I not prioritizing that?" It is I need it? I, I yeah. literally need that time. Yeah. I also think, aside from absolutely setting intentional time, that is like crucial. It also comes down to your relationship in your single season with Jesus. Like you have to have it individually. You cannot get into a relationship and expect, well, he's got good faith, so it'll almost. No, keep going. Oh, like, it'll almost rub off onto me. Or if he's convicted on that or if she's convicted on that. No, like, you need to have your own relationship with God, your own relationship with Jesus before you get into your relationship. And then when you're in your relationship, you need to continue that walk together by by being disciplined with your intentional time with the Lord as much as you can. And, like, setting those times and respecting those times as, like, scheduled times the way you would respect an appointment with another human. Or, you know, like... You need to respect that time that you schedule with the Lord. If that means you wake up earlier, if that means you stay up a little later, if it means you're going home on your lunch break rather than going to grab drinks, or I don't know if people do that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, but, like, it means sacrifice. Like, the Lord wants to see you make those sacrifices to be in relationship with Him. The Lord is all about sacrifice, and that means your time, too. And I know a big one for me was, like, I was not getting... I could have just gone up 30 minutes earlier and spent time with the Lord, and instead, I was letting myself sleep in a little later. And it's like, I could hear the God telling me, like, so you're going to choose to sleep rather than spend time with me? Like, you're choosing to sleep over me? I was like, dang, no, like, let me get up. Or, you know. But, um, yeah, like, being disciplined at that time. And no one's going to be perfect, ever. So. Also, focusing on your relationship, it's a lot of different things mm -hmm. throughout the day, too, mm -hmm. as well. Who you're around. Yeah, absolutely. What you listen to. Absolutely. You know, like your environment is a big mm -hmm. thing. The things that you see, mm -hmm. the things that you hear, um, all those play a part in focusing on your relationship sure. and, and build a relationship with the Lord. Um, because it can be people can pull you back. The stuff you listen to. Like all these things can like pull you back. You could be like wanting to like strengthen your relationship with the Lord. And, you know, you, you, you get in your car and you listen to NBA Youngboy and you putting all this stuff in your head, right? You let the enemy in. Right. You know, people think, oh, it's just music. And, you it's know, it's, it's really not. It's really not. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's planting seeds in your mind um, with all the stuff that you, that you listen to, the environments that you're in. You, you say you want to strengthen your relationship with the Lord, but you're still in a club, you know. And you expect to find your wife in the club? Yeah, that too. No, but I'm saying it all's connected. Yeah, it, it's, it's, all it's all connected. connected. It's literally yeah. all connected. You know what I'm saying? And um, you it, it it you can't be one foot in, one foot out. Mm -hmm. 
if you truly want to strengthen your relationship with the Lord, you know, you, you have to be all in, mm -hmm. you know, don't be lukewarm. What's the scripture that says, I'm trying to look that up. That it's in Revelations. Says, it's in Revelations about being lukewarm. No, oh, no, not that one, sorry. Oh, okay, go uh, ahead. That's a good one, too. Um, about basically worshiping in all that you do. And all that you do needs to reflect the way God has called you to live and, like, your, mm -hmm. your praise for him. Um, worship. And worship is not... Worship is not just, like, singing. Singing, and, right. You know, it's, it's not just going to church and being at your worship song. It's also the way that you, you praise God a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, like he said, every time that you choose to obey, obey the Lord and obey um, the way he wants you to live your life versus the way the world pulls you to, you're strengthening your relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Every time you let the world pull you, which it's, it's hard. It's not just suddenly easy to just, you know, like literally we were at a boxing gym the other day and mm -hmm. they got sexual music playing, of course. And I used to listen to that heavy, like I know all the lyrics. Okay. And I'm sitting there. Not even realizing I'm singing all the words. And then he looks at me and I'm like, I didn't realize I was singing. Like, I was singing to it because I just know the words and it's, it's there. And, like, I'm in that environment. And so automatically I'm back singing those songs. And then I'm, like, having to be aware of stopping, you know. So anyway, like, you're not just going to suddenly world out only the Lord. Like, th th it doesn't work that way. There's a reason. Pick up your cross daily. Yeah. You know, you literally have to do that daily. Um, it could be so easy to just, like, you know, oh, I've been, you know, months or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, with the Lord. And then, you know, as soon as you stop praying, you know, stop reading your Bible, stop spending time with the Lord and your friends calling you to do this, he do that. You, to seek him for a reason. you know, yeah. you're now you're off doing things you're not supposed to do. You're and, like, you shouldn't be there. <laughs> yeah. And, and and it can pull you. So it's literally like a fight daily. It like is. literally it's, it's, it's war. Sure. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, we're not against uh, flesh and blood, but, uh, Spirits and principalities, mm -hmm. you know, it's a spiritual battle, like yeah. literally every day, like literally every day that you step out your, yeah. your house, like you have a decision, you make decisions every day. I forgot the number, how many decisions that you make in a day that humans make, but a lot. yeah, each decision, you know, each thought, the Bible talks about, you know, uh, hold every thought captive and align it with Christ. Right. So thoughts come in your head, you know, all that type of stuff. I am sitting here today. You know, I'm saying I'm a man of God, you know, and thoughts still come to my head. And I'm like, nope. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I literally, literally. Say I'm like, the word nope in your yeah, head. Yeah. Like, <laughs> nah. You know what I'm saying? Or it's like, it, it's it's with everything. You know, your decisions, your thoughts, music, environment, friends, like all that stuff aligns and goes hand in hand with strengthening your relationship with the Lord. And a good, I think a good indicator, a good way to like gauge yourself and hold yourself accountable is like, if someone knew that I was a follower of Christ, that I praised Jesus, and then they also saw me doing this or with this person or in this environment or saying these things or singing these songs, would they be confused? If they be confused by that, you're probably not in the right place because the Lord is not a God of confusion. Mm -hmm. It would not be confusing. It would be very clear, you know, like they see you, they see you're in church, talk about the Lord, you talk about God on your story, but then you're, you're in a strip club. That's confusing. <laughs> Like you're not you're not leading someone to the Lord properly the way we're called to right so that's kind of a good indicator. We need to do a better job as Christians, just in general, people that claim Christ, mm -hmm. um, to actually represent mm -hmm. Christ. That's, yeah, we like, are representation. Literally, it's it's like you know well, I play sports and when I was little, my dad you know used to say like you know represent that last name right on your jersey. And you want to go out there and, and play good football and play whatever out. sport we're you want to show out. Represent your name, yeah. And it's the same thing when we're claiming Christ. Because a lot of people claim Christ and are not living right. according to it. And then it confuses people. It confuses people. And I'm not condemning them. Mm -mm. You know, I'm not the type of person. I understand that literally it's hard. It's hard. And yeah. we're not perfect. I get mm -hmm. that. Um, but we have to do a better job of striving and, and trying, dying to yourself, yeah. dying to your flesh daily yeah. and, and, and really trying to represent because sure. like you said, like people are always watching yeah. and God wants to use people, you guys that's watching, 
God can and will use everything. Exactly. Everyone. Use everything. You don't have to have this big platform. No. You don't have to have whatever. Yeah, it can be like, a stranger to say hello to in the grocery exactly. store. Exactly. Exactly. It can be your family. It can be Absolutely. your friends. Like you can reach each person that's breathing watching this right now can reach somebody and God can use you um for his purpose. It's so. like if so, if someone has never seen the image of the Lord, I know for sure when they see me, they're going to because I'm going to do my absolute best to represent Christ. They're going to see it when they when they talk to me or I'm going to try my best, you know. 100%. I feel like kind of answered that question because to tie it all back around, everything that you, you do can strengthen your relationship with Jesus. 100%. Last and final question. Let's hear it. It's not really a question. It's kind of just a comment. Mm -hmm. about practicing abstinence in and out of relationship putting barriers in place boundaries barriers boundaries all that i wasn't correcting you i was just like saying yes boundaries yeah that that is big make the decision and put as many barriers and boundaries in place as possible because i know for one you know doing things sexually you know, before marriage and stuff like that. Um, you can fall into like lust. I talk about how lust is like the strongest thing that, you know, we face, mm -hmm. right? And how the devil used lust to literally yeah. ruin a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And steer people to people who God has not called them to be with. 100%. And the culture teaches us that right. that's the norm. So you have to identify that. And no, okay, I'm struggling with lust. I do not want to do this no more. Yeah. So for one, I don't need to be in a club where people are dressed half naked. That was like my biggest thing when I was like really doubling down with the Lord. Um, like being convicted on saying Being anything. super convicted. I literally had friends, whole nine, like, oh, like I'm having my birthday party. Like, you know, we're going here. I would not go. I you don't, go to their dinner, you won't go to the club Exactly. After, right? I don't care say, yeah. who you are. I don't care what you invited me to. I'm not going to the club. That was my boundary, right? I wasn't compromising for anybody. Mm -hmm. My own dad could have been like, come on, King, let's go. Went. And you know, it was my dad. <laughs> but, you know, but I'm like, no, I'm not going. You know what I'm saying? But I knew because I, w I wasn't trying to do that stuff no more. So you stood 10 toes down. Exactly. In that so I know I can't be there. Yeah. Identify, you know, where you can't be. Start putting barriers in place, like all these different things. Um, it's needed so you can, you know, fight guard that. Guard yourself. Guard yourself, mm -hmm. you know. I think standing, like, standing ten toes in that conviction and being willing to be bold and maybe get a little bit uncomfortable, especially like when you're dating. I went on a date, and it was actually my second date with a guy. And uh, he was a believer. He knew I was a believer. And I felt, like, called in that moment, this moment while we were eating, to, like, let him know. I just was like, I'm going to let you know. I am planning on being, not planning on, like, I am convicted on being absent until marriage. Um, and I'm telling you know that. And if it's something that you're not, you don't feel the same way about, no hard feelings here. Like, no hard feelings at all. I'm, I'm not tripping on it. I want to let you know now before we keep going on dates and you find this out about me. And I wanted to see, I also wanted to see what his response was. And his response told me everything. His response was, well, yeah, I would want that for you. And I immediately was like, yeah, this ain't it. But it was a little bit uncomfortable for me to have that conversation because I'd never had that conversation with anybody before. So I had to, like, just randomly bring it up and randomly tell him this. But I knew it was important, and I never saw him again. And uh, I don't know if, like, that was why, like, you know, for him probably. it was. You know, probably was. Um, but him saying, I want that for you, immediately I was like, no, you should want that for you and your relationship with the Lord, not for me. It has nothing to do with me. So immediately I knew, mm-mm. But I had to, I had to get uncomfortable and stand firm in that conviction and let it be known immediately and let that boundary be known so that I could immediately be shown if that was someone I should keep saying or not. And it was an easy, just like, okay, I'm saying I'm not anymore. Mm -hmm. And the minute I actually called him, cause we were just friends at this time. I called him and told him about it and he was like, yeah, no, surf it. That's what you call like, surf it. That surf ain't it. it. That's not the response. That ain't <laughs> nope. it. Nope. No, I was like, you should, I said the same thing. I was like, nah. Cause that that you gotta want it for yourself, mm -hmm. and that's a big thing, um, especially as a man. Like you know, a man's supposed to lead. Yeah. So, you know, that's like the biggest thing. And, and what she did for, 
I'm sure this is majority women watching these things. You should ask that question literally every time you go on a date. And their answer will tell you everything you need to know. Hundred percent. And don't feel it doesn't have to be the first date. Maybe it should. Honestly, maybe you should actually no, wait, I'm not gonna get wait it out the way. Yeah. I'm gonna let you know right now. Honestly, I'm a believer. Mm -hmm. I follow Christ. And mm -hmm. <laughs> 100%. And, and just because somebody say that they follow the Lord and stuff like that. Uh, I've had my friends tell plenty of stories about guys who say they're men of, they're men, you know, men of God, yep. they're, they're followers of Christ, blah, blah, blah. And they bring the conversation up and they're like, whoa, 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 that's different though. Yeah, 100%. And they're like, why is that different? Like, mm -hmm. like no, no, that's that's a need. That's a requirement. And my right. friends have been like, okay. Like, oh, I got I to gotta test drive it before I buy it and all this other stuff that, you know, folks will say. Yeah. And... You know, don't fall for it. You know, I don't care, you know, what the man looked like, you know, that's that's a big thing. Lust, I say, probably so one of the... The Bible tells us to flee from it. Yeah. Literally, the, on, the only thing the Bible tells you to flee from. The only thing. It's huge. It's so important. It's so important. Because literally not practicing abstinence, when you begin to understand why God calls you to do that, and like I said... You understand his heart behind it and why it is protection for you. You understand that you probably can reflect on every situation you've been in and you will for sure know you only stayed because you were not being absent, because you were having sex. And that's what kept you there, right? So it keeps you in the wrong situation. You find yourself with the wrong people settling or staying places way too long because now you're attached to that person when if you hadn't been having sex with them, you'd be gone in a heartbeat, right? So it's, it's protection in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. But the enemy knows that if he can get you to do that, he can keep you there and he can keep you thus away from who has God, who God has planned for you because a couple that is, uh, God has called to be together, has prepared. Like has, that too? I can't say the word. I'm not, English! A couple that God has prepared ahead of time, they are going to do the Lord's work in some way together. Mm. That God is going to call them to in, in, in whatever way, shape, or form. And the enemy knows that. So he's going to try to keep you away. A lot of people don't like that you know sex is a need and all that other yeah. stuff which it is but you know in context in context and i know when i bring it up to people or i might like mention that um like and, your, your guy friends yeah that's my guy friends well certain groups of guy friends uh, I meant, yeah, yeah yeah certain groups of guy friends uh you know they're looking at me crazy but i'm trying to get them to understand why the Lord wants that. Yeah. And when you really grasp why he wants that, like, you know, you're like, it makes you sense. You choose that for yourself. Right. You know you, it, exactly. You no know. one has to convince you. Exactly. I've been in relationships that I was not supposed to be in just because we were having sex, you know? And I was like, oh, this is great, you know? Oh, sex and is there's good. And there's like this laundry list of reasons why this relationship is absolutely not for you and it's so toxic, but you're like, eh. Right. <laughs> literally, literally, like... You know, you're, you're connected, you know, and as I started like, okay, I future wife, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that because yeah. I, one, I want to do it the Lord's way. I understand why and I don't want to taint the relationship any way, shape or form. Like I, I don't want to mess it up by me being lustful. And I think too, once you like fall into that lustful thing, it can be easier and you can be susceptible to one getting comfortable, like seeking other. Infidelity. Yeah, that too. I was. No, you didn't. Oh, sorry. That's what I was getting yeah. to, but infidelity. Yeah. Um, because you're operating in that lust. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and two, like just like getting to know you, um, because first I thought this with. <laughs> uh, um, getting to know you. Like on a completely different level, yeah. on a deeper level, that's literally, you know, not the the, the sex involved. Not jaded by the lens of sex. Yes, yeah. it's a, it's different. It's a different type of connection. When it does come, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be special. It's gonna be like, it's gonna be already here and it's gonna go through right. the roof, you know. The guardrails. You you meet somebody. Oh, you're you're convicted on not having sex. Um, you know that person might leave. You're like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? I know that's not what God has for me. But yeah. if, you know, you meet somebody and it's like, oh, like, you're cute and y'all have sex. And, you know, later on, he starts to reveal that this is not the yeah. person. But you just, you brush it off. 
Honestly, though, I think just to sum up that question, setting boundaries, whether you're in a relationship or out of it, is the only way you're going to achieve that mm-hmm. after having the conviction. Mm-hmm. But get the conviction for yourself first. And by getting your word, understanding why God wants you to be absent before marriage, before marriage, understand his intent behind it so you genuinely are wanting it and choosing it for yourself. And then from there, stand ten toes down on that conviction. Be willing to tell any person you're meeting, whether you're you know dating a man or you're a, a guy dating a woman, whoever you are, whoever you are looking to date or you are pursuing, stand ten toes down on that conviction. Let it be known and be, be confident in it. Be very assured about it. Don't feel like you're doing something weird or crazy just because other people don't do that. Who cares? Who cares? Like, that's that's your conviction. Let it be known mm-hmm. because who God has for you will be convicted on it too. I promise mm-hmm. you. And and then when you finally do find that person that you know is convicted on it for themselves also, you'll be able to tell by the way they talk about it, then set boundaries. In a relationship and out of it. We need to wrap it up. All right. Anything you want to add before we close up? Uh, No. Right. Just make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification to be notified when she uploads more videos. What he said? And subscribe to my channel, please. Yes. Uh, you should link my channel down I'll here. Link it below. Yeah, thanks. We appreciate you all for being here, for listening to us chat about all of this. Definitely happy to make a part two to get to all of the questions that we weren't able to get to. If y'all would like that, so just make sure you leave your thoughts below, leave your comments below. If you have questions, we got you. We'll be in the comments. Other than that, go ahead and uh, do your outro dance. I'm done.